Hi everybody and welcome to another video. My name is Linda Salter and today we're going to talk about hypermobility. Does anybody know what that means? It means that you have a connective tissue disorder. Um, your connective tissue that holds your joints together are too stretchy. They're not strong enough so that means you have excessive movement in your joints like cricking and cracking. A lot of people say they crick and crack. Maybe it's just your knees. Maybe it's just your knees and ankles. Maybe it's your hips. Maybe it's your hips and shoulders. Um, but there's also a spectrum of hypermobility. And um, if you're at the top of it, that is called hy uh, hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos Ehlers syndrome. Uh, and Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, those people suffer greatly because they have so much instability in so many joints that uh, they suffer a lot of pain, but they also suffer a lot of health issues that are, the doctors are now finding that it's all related to, especially in their necks, because these people have, if you're hypermobile, you tend to have one, two, or three of these associated problems, okay? Often uh, people that are hypermobile will have POTS, which is standing up and feeling dizzy. It's an actual increase of uh, your, uh, the beating of your heart goes up uh, beats per minute uh, 30 as soon as you stand up. Um, what's happening could be is there's a missed signal. There's too much movement in here when you stand up your brain doesn't get enough blood right away and it sends a super signal back down to your heart going yo bring me some blood the blood starts pumping like crazy and then all of a sudden you feel dizzy you some people suffer like if you stand still for too long you kind of get that feeling too um so hypermobility comes with pots and or dysautonomia was it dysautonomia is um dysfunction in any of your organ systems that is automatic so like your heart beats without you thinking it just beats right you you breathe without even thinking you your urinary system works your guts work without you making it telling it to work right that's your autonomic nervous system so all the things that you don't control by thinking that just work by themselves can be affected so that's any of your symptoms so people that are hypermobile, especially the higher up on the spectrum, um, you tend to suffer from POTS, you tend to suffer dysautonomias, and mast cell activation. Mast cells, they have found them in the, your nervous tissue now too, in your brain and in your uh, cauda equina. So it's everywhere in your nervous tissue. A lot of people think of just the guts. It's in your skin. These are like the crazy uh, surveillance part of your immune system. And they, when they go off, they release like over 200 different chemicals. So what does that mean to you? It means mast cell activation means you have a hypersensitivity to anything. Uh, it's like crazy allergies. One day you can sit on a chair and you're fine. And one day that same chair is going to give you hives. So if you get hives, uh, funky allergies, one day you can eat something, one day you can't. Sensitivity to smells, sensitivity to uh, foods, things like that. So uh, so people that are hypermobile tend, it, tend to have associated problems. POTS, mast cell activation, and dysautonomia. Now it all depends how high up on the spectrum you are. So some people are pretty hypermobile, but they don't suffer anything because they've stayed strong. They haven't had any neck injuries. Um, they're not looking down at their phone all the time. Um, but most people that I see here tend to be have the most health issues. The more hypermobile you are, or if you're hypermobile, you're more likely to have gut problems and headaches and cold hands and feet and urinary problems, uh, anxiety, heart palpitations, you name it, uh, all sorts of stuff like that. So how do you know if you're hypermobile? 
Well, uh, we're going to look at a little chart here. So this chart, um, so your joints go past the normal range of motion. Like here in the knees, right? Your knees bow backwards. That means your knees are weak. The connective tissue is weak. It lets your joints go past the normal range. And that's not good. How do you stop that? Never stand like that. Always keep your knees slightly bent. They keep your muscles engaged. And you will save yourself. You will keep your muscles strong because your connective tissue can't hold that joint properly, right? You probably crick and crack in your knees a lot too. Um, by engaging or keeping your knees bent, you engage your muscles. You keep them strong because they got to help hold that joint together. You're going to save yourself a knee replacement down the road. And I see a lot of young ladies, especially men have it too, but it's usually more, it tends to be more in women, uh, especially at a younger age. So uh, if your kid is doing this, show her this video or him. Okay, and you see this one here. So if you can touch your thumb to your forearm, that means you have a hypermobile thumb. This one here too. And this one here, if you can fully put your hands on the ground when you bend over, that means you're hypermobile. This up, upside down V, your, your arm is actually supposed to be more like a V when you straighten it. It's not supposed to be upside down like that. So this here, uh, never do that when you sit down. I know it's fun to do these tricks. Don't do them as much as possible. So what else? Hypermobility. So these people tend to have uh, a few different symptoms too. So um, do you crick and crack? So do any of your joints crick and crack? Oftentimes people tell me here, that's C1, C2. If you crick and crack like that, that's C0, C1. Um, a lot of knees, a lot of ankles. Do you roll your ankles easily? Uh, do you injure yourself easily? Can you pop? Have you dislocated shoulders? Um, do you have uh, little bumps on the back of your heel? Do you have stretchy skin? Do you have poor wound healing? Do you bruise easily? Um, stretch marks for no reason, you know? Like if you grew a foot, okay, you might have stretch marks around your hips or something. But uh, I see a lot of young people with stretch marks and they, you know, it's not, they're not very big. Um, so a bunch of stuff like that. There's more on the Telegram channel about this. Um, it's easier for me to post stuff like that. Why is it important to know? And nobody knows about this because there's things you can do before you get bad. The younger you are, the better off you'll be. Um, you can still help people in their 60s and 70s though. If they know what, what to look for, what not to do, you can help yourself. It's not a death sentence by any means. But the people that are high up on the spectrum need a lot more help. And they suffer greatly. They look fine. They look healthy. They look wonderful. But they suffer. You just can't see what they're suffering. Um, so those people, I say to go look up... Uh, uh, the Ellers Danlos uh, found uh, there's the Ellers Danlos foundations things like that you can look up for tips. There's a lot of different medications you can do and stuff, but uh, for the people that aren't that bad, there's easy things to do like keep your knees bent at all times. Stop looking down at your phone. If you're gonna do weights and your elbow goes upside down, make sure you don't lift heavy weights and you never lock your elbows straight. Uh, if you're looking for a job or a career, make sure you're, if you're very hypermobile, you don't want to load up your joints with heavy stuff. Like you don't want to be a heavy machinery mechanic possibly because you're going to injure yourself a lot quicker. But just sitting all day at a desk is just as bad because if you don't have time to do some exercise, you do a lot of this and you have instability in here. You can basically give yourself a mild traumatic brain injury injury on a daily basis. That's what's happening. A lot of people don't know about this. That's why I started these channels. Um, we're going to post more about this. Again, find a little exercise routine. Don't have to do heavy duty weights. Just keep your frame and your core strong. Everybody says your tummy is your core. I disagree. 
Your core is your apple core. Think of an apple. It goes down the center. Your spine is very important. Yes, your stomach's going to hold up your spine. But don't forget the rest of it. This is very important. So upper back, upper neck strengthening is a good idea too. Okay, so uh, we're going to do more on this after. Uh, next time I think we're going to talk about POTS because a lot of people have POTS and I've helped a lot of people with it. So stay tuned. Thanks and we'll talk to you soon.